even with the flashlight, it's like pitch black in the jungle. Oh wait, this does the lantern thing, don't it? Oh, that is it. So we're out here um, traipsing around in the jungle. Oh, found us a spider. He got mad. Because he touched his web. Oops. Sorry, dude. Ooh. Made him mad. He left. Let's see if we can find some more critters. You can see it just goes way up there. The canopy's like way up there, and there's the moon behind it somewhere. Yep, almost a full moon. Alright, we're gonna go further in here into the jungle. Can you see anything? Not out there. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to see anything. What was that? I'm leaving! Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah. And then look. It does look like that. Don't they go after the leaf cutter ant? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It's cordyceps? Maybe. I don't I mean, I'm not a plant. It doesn't look like it's attacking the plant, does it? It's growing right out of the plant. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like taking one and introducing it to the desert. No. It wouldn't survive. What do you, I mean, I don't know what else that could be besides a fungus. See, because here's a normal leaf. And then here's this one. It's all infected. Damn. See that? And I was here yesterday. That wasn't here. Up there, too. Over here. Weird, huh? How far down does it go? I only see it on those leaves. And uh, this is the plants that the leaf cutters are eating. Oh, look up here. There's something in it, like an orange bug. No, it looks like a small leaf. Now, there's just a leaf cutter ant right there. And what's cool about this tree, it's a Chechen tree, but just the tree. And it puts out a toxic poison. However, the uh, vines on it are the antidote to that poison and you can see those ants go all the way up there I'm surprised I don't see more spiders after these ants but trying to eat them yeah all right that's over I got poop I gotta poop in the jungle now oh my god We're... I hope these are Hypoallergenic because I'm gonna have to wipe my butt and there's no toilet paper out here. I wanted really to share this story because so on the pathway of the resort as you guys can see there's the jungle is around us or around me <laughs> and there's the pathway but there's different native plants and native trees with different um, with the stories and history of what kind of uh, trees this and blah 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 so the one i wanted to share is because i thought it was very interesting and this tree here let me see it's right behind me let me i'm gonna turn the view so you guys can see it and i'm gonna read what it says okay if i can get the light so this is a tree that i'm talking about you see how it has the tree and then a vine it's kind of hard to do it <laughs> there's a tree and the vine around it. So apparently these two trees, or the tree, I'm sorry, is, is it always grows with this vine. And the story behind it is, it's down here, it's 
too small for you guys to read, but I'm gonna read it. So you guys bear with me uh, while I read. Okay, it says, there is always a chaka found next to the Chechen tree, says the Maya legend. Hold on, there's a leaf I can't see. Okay. Um, so the legend goes, as there's two warrior princes, brothers in strength, but different from each other. Kinich was gentle and kind, and Tisik was hard filled with, his heart was filled with anger and hatred. They were both in love with the princess Nix, Nix, Nixteha, and they declare, declare a fight until the death in order to win her heart. Here, there's, uh, right there you can also see the tree with the leaves and the vines around it. All right, uh, so the earth crumbled and the skies hid during their battle. The longer and the longest and the most horrific that the world has ever seen before, up until they both died in each other's arms. So they both died fighting each other for the hand of this princess. So they beg for forgiveness for, from the gods in the world of the spirits and another chance to return to the living world and to see their beloved Nikteha one more time. This is how Tisik was reborn as the Chechen tree, secreting a black poison from its branches that burns anybody who gets near. Kinich as the Cheka, whose nectar heals the poison from the Chechen tree. Both solemnly safeguarding Nik Nikteha, who died of sadness, but returned to life as a beautiful white flower. This is a balance between good and evil. She died out of sadness, but returned to life as a beautiful white flower. There is a balance between good and evil throughout the Mayans' view of the world. And in fact, is a person, if a person has contact with the Chechen tree, it provokes a superficial womb and burns the skin. What's up, homie? So we were looking all over nature for you and here you are at the hotel. What up with that? What's up, man? Why weren't you out in nature where we were looking for you sweating? You're here at the hotel kicking it, waiting for room service? They do look like lemurs more than raccoons, huh? What's up, you raiding the garbage, buddy? Hey, let me back off, you're not very clear. There we go. You getting some snacks out of the garbage? Oh, here's a little bitty baby right here. Huh? I know, I already filmed him. Oh, look. This is exactly where we left the stuff last night. See that? I know. There's one in it. He might need help to get out. His tail's still on. Hey, you got any snacks with you? You got any snacks? For the baby? No? That's a lot of babies. Those are all baby. 
You too, buddy. Don't don't get lost. so sleepy till we got here. What is that with that? The heat? Moisture? Hola. I am 
taking a moving picture. So we're at one of the famous cenotes, which is beautiful. And Anna, her mom, the baby, and Lostin are gonna go swimming. Not bad, right now. Lost it. You, never mind. You can save it till you kind of get down there. I'm going to be filming the whole thing. So go for it. And if you if you want to swim, just give it back to me. Yeah, I don't think you can swim with that in your hand. I said I don't think you can swim with that in your hand. A bench? No. It's the cubby, it's part of the cave. Here. I can go up there? Okay. What about this one? You, you take the end, only you need to put this one. Don't need nothing, only put this. That's okay. No, because you got all. I gotta zoom. Anna. Look, mira. Mira. <laughs> she said to put a life jacket on and I could go down there. I know that. I heard I understand. I'm not gonna rent a vest to stand here. Well, very pretty, but evidently I, I can't go stand there, uh, down there without renting a vest. Señores, acérquense por favor de close, please. Y cuando termines el tour, el disco es over y regresen a su hotel, el mismo banco del hotel, van a ir al spa, yo no te corto el spa, y van a preguntarle a ellos, yo no te master. Lady from the spa, la mitad del spa, 
¿Cuál es la terapia de masaje más cara que tiene? Which one is the most expensive massage therapy that you have? Te van a mostrar una mujer hermosa. They are going to show you a beautiful girl. Con la espalda desnuda, with the back naked. Y siete dos con la espalda. Al saber para con su coger back. ¿Han visto ustedes esta imagen? ¿Cambió a ver si bitch? ¿Sí o no? Yes o no? ¿Por qué son siete rocas? Why there are seven rocks? Chakras. Chakras. ¿Y qué son los chakras? Se van a dar chakras. Look at me, veanme. Hipófisis. Pineal. ¿Qué glándula tenemos aquí? Tiroides. Tyrox. Timo. Páncreas. Suparenas. Ingénicas. En nuestro sistema endocrino linfático. Y so well, endocrinology is linfatic system. Esto es sal. This is salt. ¿Ven esta piedra? Can you take a look at this rock? ¿De qué color la ven? Which color you see it? All of them. Gold. All of them. Negra. Negra, verde. Vean yeah, lo que va a suceder. Take a look what's going to happen. La piedra, the rock, se convierte en dorada. Becomes golden. ¿Y por qué se convierte en dorada? Why becomes golden? Porque los iones de cobre, because the ions of copper, they come to the surface, vean la superficie. Venga usted conmigo. Entonces, si yo la masajeo, if, if I massage her, este masaje que le estoy dando, this massage that they are making to her, no es en su piel, it's not on her skin. Porque la piedra crea electricidad por fricción, because the rock makes electricity to fricción. Se llama electricidad transcutánea. Y this transcutánea es electricidad. El masaje que le estoy dando, the massage that I am making to her, es en sus células, it's on her cells. Y las estoy reactivando todas, and I am reactivating the yeah. alone. Señores, cuando te empiecen a, a, a salir varios lunares, When you start having a lot of spots in your skin, tienes que atenderte. You have to take care of you. No existe nada mejor, no se existe ni ti better for this spot, para estos lunares, that this que esto. Esto te regenera la piel. This regenerates your skin. Circulación de sangre, blood circulation, there's nothing better like than this. No hay nada mejor que esto. De hecho, hay un doctor bien famoso en el mundo, that is a very famous medical doctor in the world, que es amigo de esta comunidad, who is a friend from this community. ¿Alguien ha escuchado ese nombre? Javier me dice que te ayudó. Doctor Deepak Chopra. ¿Quiénes han escuchado ese nombre? How many of you have listened to this name? Él viene aquí, he comes here. El chamán trabaja para el chamán por su equipo. Él llegó a decir, dice, tú vas a quedar la masaje. A week, a la semana, muy bien, con eso puede incrementar nuestra expectativa de vida por 5 años. Can you think that it's your life? Ahora señores, ¿cómo que how do you think que eso, la bici, que es plástico, which is plastic, which is not made by country, que no se hace en mi país? Todo Termina con esto, feliz, feliz. Y termina con nuestro chamán, esa feliz de los chamanes. Tengo el honor, hay que abrir de presentarle su introducción a su primo Father Shaman, un padre Shaman Supremo. Él es Don Crescencio Balam, he is Mr. Crescencio Balam. ¿Cuántos mexicanos hay aquí? ¿Cómo le dicen que se ¿Se acuerdan de un chamán que bendijo Juan Pablo II? Es él. Él va a dar la ceremonia. He's going to give the, the ceremony. He takes five minutes, toma cinco minutos. ¿Te acuerdas qué hacer con las estatuas? Do you remember what to do with the statues? Right and left, mano derecha y mano izquierda. Y a muchos de nosotros, a muchos de nosotros, nos van a desbloquear cierto canal para poder abrir nuestra espiritualidad más, ¿ok? Entonces, concéntense con él, focus me aquí. Cuando él llegue, once he comes, no pictures, no fotos, no filming, no filmar, because electronics, mucho por energy. Los electrónicos jalan nuestra energía, ¿de acuerdo? Déjenme ir por el eléctrico.
mañanas temprano voy a cantar mis canciones. Todas las mañanas bajo tu ventana canto esta canción.
que no he cambiado y se van a hablar de 8 minutos de acá y tú, el 40 minutos of fate, 40 minutos de tiempo libre. Bueno, entonces señores, 4.30 en el autobús, 4.30 en el autobús, 4.30 en el autobús. Hopefully this fix the audio. Only Thank you. Thirty Riz. have that one, so the other have the double. Uh, trust me, always the visitors say, "What are you doing here? This is not there." But according to the archaeologists, the architecture is perfect. These temples have different names actually. Some people call the castle. There's the pyramid. Take a look at the design. Looks like a triangle. Archaeologists call it the Temple of Kukulkan because twice in the year we can see the shadow of the snake god right there to the left side. Through those levels, we can see this. So take a look at the line of light. A snake head on the ground. This looks like a big serpent coming down. March 21 and September 22nd, we can see this. Equinox. Exactly. Equinox of the spring. Now his name is Kukulkan, so for that reason they say let's call the Temple of the Kukulkan. But the real name of that one in Mayan language is Nohoch Solkim. Exactly, that means the solar calendar. Because that one is one calendar. But a calendar with 19 months, not with 12. Today we have to use the Gregorian calendar because the system of the light is completely different. Mayans in the back time they were farmers. You can look those circles up there. You see the different colors? All the vendors use the circles to explain about the calendar because according to the Mayan beliefs, they use at the maximum point of the sun all the time to build temples like that one. So the sun is a circle, they say let's use a circle calendar. The question now is, how we know it's a calendar? Because the Mayans also the vendors use 18 months of 20 days and the last one five. Because 18 times 20, how much is? I should think. 360. <laughs> last five with last month with five? 365 we have a year? That don't look like one calendar, right? But the stairway, the stairway have 90 steps. Four facade with 90 steps in each facade. So 90 steps times four is 60 again. Now take a look at the roof. Take a look at the last lampstands. The roof, four for stones. We can see in the back time they use it five. But the time destroyed the civilization. The jungle was covered all this land. At the year 1840, I have the picture. Give me one second. At the year 1840, Mr. John Lloyd Stevenson and Mr. Frederick Catherine, these two persons discovered Chichen Itza like this picture. Into the jungle. Wow. So the, the, 
all the plants draw up through the stones to remove all this. The ground is only can see just four of the stones on the top, but in the back time was five. So 360 steps around plus five on the roof, 365 days, like the Mayan calendar. I'm now taking up the corner, taking the corner to the right side. How many levels you can see right there? There's other nine to the left. Nine. Yep. We have 18. Like the 18 months of 20 days, because each level has 10 steps. For that reason, have to be nine stairs. Now, if you divide the third way, you can have 10 steps to the right side or the 10 to the left. Basically, this temple has 18 levels with 20 steps by level, 360 plus 5 on the roof, 19 months, 365 days, one calendar. So, the architecture is perfect. Now, we can see this in March 21. According to the archaeologists, the equinox of the spring. The God coming down to fertility, all this area. But what is the truth? What really happened in those days? The world have a balance. 12 hours day, 12 hours night. That happened in those days. For that reason, you can see here the sun shine at the dark. Easy. For my and symbol of the day and the night, nine and levels right there at the corner. The baby is born in nine months. Symbol of the light. Seven triangles of lights, seven days, one week, colors of the rainbow, the looking number, your eyes, nose, mouth, here's a round of your head, it's a seven. That one, take a look at the building over there, chicos. That one is the ball field. In the back time, the Mayans and Toltecs warriors, they use a team by seven players in there. At the end of the game, they kill it once. The question is, who's that? Which player? The winner. Yes. They kill it the best one. I know that is ridiculous, right? Why the best one? We celebrate Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos. Nobody wanna die, but we celebrate Day of the Dead. In the back time, the beautiful part of the life was the dead. A chance to go into the underworld, to get the glory of the gods, and then reborn maybe to say, I'm dead. I am like one god. So the kings use these things to control the population. Fear, intimidation, some beliefs. Chichen Itza have a wall around to divide rich Mayans in, poor Mayans outside. So in March 21, the kings can use all this day, night, life and death, because the number seven was the symbol of the death for Mayans, to explain how the farmers have to pay the taxes. So the kings in front of the doors can use this to say, hey guys, take a look. The door of the super world is open now. You go, your God going down. If you want to speak with him, you have to pay first. <laughs> Taxes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They don't know it. They don't know it about this. They don't know it, all the kings use it, the direction of the sun, the cycles of the moon, or some special stars to discover the best angle to use the sunshine when the season changed, was easy, control the population, right? Now, right there in front of the stars, chicos, some people clapping, because clapping we can hear the Quetzal noise. Just clapping, the bird. you scream something. Listen, this is the regular <laughs> Hello! Hey! The echo bouncing, right? Mm -hmm. Now listen how this changes. Wow. You hear it? Like a bird singer, right? That's awesome. That's the Quetzal bird. The holy bird for this Mayan, because the bird is small but the tail is long, so this flying looks like one dragon, like a snake with feathers. The name of the Mexica's god is Quetzalcoatl. Quetzal means feathers, Coatl is snake, like say feather is snake. In my language, Mayan, Kukulkan. Now imagine who was the life in the back time. 40,000 farmers around of all this area clapping and the snake going down. So the kings one more time can use this acoustic to say, farmers, listen, the voice of your god. He's speaking. And you know what he say? <laughs> He said you have to pay. Pay taxes. Yes, they don't know it. The system. Thing, right? yeah. Listen to this. 
This looks complicated, right? The Q stick. So how they did it? It's just lambstones. This is so easy. Flat lambstones. There, they never use that blocks. Under of the stairs, there are like curves, like natural magnets, because your echo can pass through the curve, and this can repel the echo around of other curves. The echo can go up through the wooden dental. Can you see the wood at the door? Yeah. Can you see, guys, in your free time, you can go close to see how the wood have a little line in the middle. So when the echo passes through the wooden dental, the sound changes, and we can hear the consignments. During many years, the Mayans can cut different mm. lambstones with different sounds to build stairways to prove how who make these sounds to control the population, right? Now, let me show you another picture, chicos. Because Chichen Itza have different times and different eras. Uh, one second. This, inside, a small pyramid. Do you remember that confused in 2012, maybe? Yep. That was marketing. Yep. The end of the world of uh, people's explain. But what's the end of the Mayan world? Nobody wanna die. So the government created this in internet in 2012. If you don't wanna die, go to Chichen Itza, it's your best option. This place was full during one week. 70,000 visitors during <laughs> wow. one week. Wow. A lot of money, right? Mayans, they, they use it, the cycles of the moon to build a moon calendar. This is more pyramid. At the end of this one, they use the direction of the sun to build the new, the new era, the new cycle, the cycle of the sun. And in 2012, was the end of that one. All right? Into this one, on top of this small pyramid, take a look at this part. Into this room, there are two special statues. Two beautiful statues right there. The first one is this. Chakmol messenger of the Mayan gods. It's not Mayan, it's a Toltec. Chichen Itza is not 100% Mayan, it's a Mayan and Toltec. That's Take right. a look there. <coughs> At the end of the sacrifices, the warriors can go in front of him to put a heart in the middle. Behind of this one, a red jaguar with 72 pieces of jade mineral around of the body. This is beautiful. Both both are still inside, but we don't have a chance to go. Not anymore. Not free. Right? 2006 was the last year. But you know, graffitis. The temple was like big toilets for some persons. What? And a lady fell in 2006 from the top. She died. I told you that was like, like the last sacrifices. And the government never want to lose money. Never, never, never. But that reason they closed the access of all these <laughs> Wow. Right now, have you seen the Apocalypto movie maybe by Mel Gibson? Yep, mm -hmm. that was Hollywood. You know why? Because Mayans they were farmers, they never practiced human sacrifices. Never the best offering for farmers was the blood. The Persians give up blood, but at the year 950, the Toltec warriors arrived in this state to make a fusion with the kings. So, the best offering for warriors that was the heart of the heart of the poor Mayans. Mr. Mel Gibson used a temple like this one to show the human sacrifices. Because that one is so famous. Right. But the true in the back time, right there. Do you see the building behind of this one? Right there, the Toltecs killed the population. Let me show you, chicos. Follow me this way. I'm on. Hold on, there's Ransom. Yo. So what you think? I think it's pretty cool. Too bad that you can't really get on it and they turned it into a commercial nightmare. Yeah. The tour guide said that the last sacrifice was in 2006 when a lady fell from the top of the... <laughs> and that the government did not want to lose, not lives, but money. Well, you know, it needs fresh blood every once in a while. So... I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, let me show them this angle over here from the I'll meet you guys over there. Oh, gracias. I just wanted to show you guys this different angle. Anyways, I guess I better get back to the tour. Look at 
Okay, Chico. Now, about human sacrifices, Mr. Mel Gibson gives us this thing. Apocalypse. Our soldiers discovered this thing into the temple of the warriors right there. Can you see the temple right there, Chico? That one? With the square pillars. On the top, I don't know if you can see in the middle of those columns the statue. Oh, yeah. Can you see another messenger of the line that? So, behind of the statue, the Toltecs used one special table to do this. One small trunk to support the body of the prisoner, because putting one man in this position, the ribs go up. And the warriors can cut between the chest to slice the hands and, and pull up the heart. With the men still alive. Oh my god. Do you know which is the last organ to die into one person? The brain. So the men how to see how the life goes to the super world. Wow. That was a belief. That was one kind to, to project the fear. So they can kill the prisons right there to say, hey, finally, somebody want a problem with us? Nobody. The population can observe. They can feel the, the fear right going around on the body. Those guys go in front of the statue to put the offering because for them was the messenger. December 22nd, we can see the stone drive in the middle of those on the statue so one more time the kings can use the temples to say hey take a look at this it's your god i told you he's the messenger the sun can get the offerings to go high in the sky and, and then give to the other gods right the truth of this was the winter solstice the bad time for us we died in winter with 20 degrees because all the time the Katana is very easy. Right? Now, because to the right side, we can observe a round column. Can you see? Right there, the Mayans go with the best harvest to trade by different kinds of minerals. Principal Mayan food in the back time was the chocolate, the chewing gum, and the corn. Gracias, no. Gracias, no. recording but anyway here we go
obviously a giant piece of the ruins is in the forest right there. You can just see all that rubble right there. And some of those big cut blocks right there, still standing. It's some really cool artwork. I'm gonna go up close and see what that is. I wanted to show you guys how flat this is. I mean, it's amazing. Precision. Look at that. I could stand up straight. And it's the same way on the side, minus the broken parts. So allegedly this was one of the big markets here at Chichen Itza. And unfortunately, the way they have it set up now is you can't actually get up there and look at it. As you can see, most of it's all wired off or they have razor wire, bob wire around it. Um, but this would have been the ancient market here um, where people were selling their goods. And even though they have it roped off, um, you can kind of see how it goes back into the forest there.
the eagles. Never we can see eagles flying in this state. That was like the flag. And then we try to get it, all right? Listen how the echo can bounce at the end. Here we go. Mama. <laughs> Now let's scream the same thing right there, huh? In one voice, together something. And then enjoy how your voice, your voice bounce at the end. Here we go, chicos. And three. One, two, three. Ha! Yeah, yeah. One more time. We can do this much better. Here we go. One, two, three. Ha! Yeah. right. Now, come up here. Let me Hi guys, I'm here with the, our tour guide and I just wanted to ask him a few questions. You said at the end of the tour that in your language, in Mayan language, how you say goodbye or... Sama, Sama Lilie we use. Never goodbye because that is when the people's gonna die. In all culture, Sama Lilie is like say, see you tomorrow, see you later. Um, sometimes this means like I will see you in another life because our culture always explain about reincarnation, a chance to other life maybe. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you heard the word in la que uh, um, in la que in la, in la que means you and I. Okay. In la que means you and I. You and I. Because in New Age, they say that in La Quech, Alakin means like hello and thank you very oh, much. Oh yes, uh, yeah, it's the new, that's the new era and the bad time, the real language is that's like... That's what say, I care about, that's the real if, thing. If you want to say, I don't know, hey, what's up? In my language, Bishtum. Bishtum? How are you is Bishabe Sukum, Bashka Walik. That means, how are you, brother? How's going your day? And you had to say, maybe, uh, Mishba, Malo, nothing, I'm good. That's the real Maya. So the real Maya way is to say, can I say it? How you say it? So I can say it? Uh, like, thank you? Oh, Jumbo Tiktej. Shkole Jumbo Tiktej, that means lady, thank you so much. Sama Lilie. Sama Lilie, that means see you tomorrow. It was a pleasure. So the last word, the last question. So the correct way to greet each other from the heart, what would it be? Like, oh, I don't know. Like, I always, we. How you say to your family hello or. We we use always Malok in Bishabe. Oh, just just Bishabe. Bishabe. Depend on how which person you're gonna speak. Maybe with your grandmother, one grandfather. You have to put your face like this first to say, hey, Malokim. Malokim. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the for the tour and speaking with us. Bye. Our short tour just ended. Ransom just went and did his own thing, and I stayed with the tour. So I recommend you guys when we get home and Ransom gets to do his thing with editing and stuff, you'll get to see a better uh, tour of the place. Not really. No? Probably. No. Um, basically, this is a giant tourist trap. Um, it takes about 20 minutes to walk around. Even if you're filming and taking photos, the majority of the temples are covered in the, in the forest still. They're not doing any new digging. Um, every corner of this place is saturated with Mercado or market. Market. Uh, uh, even by, there's a, the, what would have been a giant market over there. It's all roped off. Um, basically, the only thing here is this main um, temple, the ball court, and warriors that you cannot see right from there. here because uh, everything's from the ground. So if it's roped off, can you walk. can't see it. Um, and yeah, basically the entire complex is cut pillars that are left, no roofs. Um, what is interesting though is there's plenty of, uh, I would call them Mayan descendants, still living around in the forest around it in, in authentic Mayan houses still um, doing their thing right outside of the tourist trap. There's really nothing archaeological here that you haven't seen on TV. There's Anna, soon to be expected mother again. Look at her baby bump from the side. I know she'll be embarrassed, but there we go. And here we're walking out into the uh, ball court which is amazing. 
As you can see, this is the Instagram selfie capital of Mexico, minus uh, Tehuatihuacan, which is a much bigger complex. And here's the famous hoop um, that they would put the rubber ball tree, as they named the Olmec, which is basically the rubber people, um, because the Olmec, they don't even know who they are, where they came from. And they gave the culture to the Mayans, including the calendar and the 26,000 year history, including, you know, to have a 26,000 year history, you would have to have knowledge of a 52,000 year history um, just to see the procession of the equinox repeat. Uh, and it's kind of unbelievable considering they're saying most of these are only dated at 300 BC, I, I believe. Uh, don't hate me if I'm wrong. I'm, I forget stuff. But here is the infamous ball court. And you can see basically in today's world, instead of an archaeological site uh, to gain knowledge, it's turned into an Instagram selfie uh, area, basically, as you can see right there. Oh, look at me, look at me, I'm important, I have an Instagram. Oh, I'm just kidding, um, but it is beautiful here. Besides being super moist, so bring your towelette. And we'll go up here and look at the other hoop on the other side. So this would have been awe-inspiring, I imagine, at the time when the city was populated. Um, but, like I said, most of it is still in the jungle. There are no natural hills or mountains here. So every hill out there in the forest is most likely a collapsed temple that's covered up by vegetation at this point. And here we'll go look at the long snake over here. Which um, some people call... Uh, Quetzalcoatl, here they would call it Kukulkan, and there's a native uh, word for it from the uh, descendants of the Mayan that's not either one of those. Uh, in South America, you would call it Veracocha, um, but basically all referencing um, some bearded dude that showed up and taught them how to rebuild society after the last deluge. Um, and you can see there's some beautiful artwork right here uh, that goes a little bit. And remember... Uh, it was an honor uh, to win this game, and you got the grand prize of being executed. And I believe this circle right here represents the galactic center, so when they put the rubber ball through it, 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 it uh, it's all correlated to rebirth. The serpent, as you know, is a symbol of uh, fertility and rebirth. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Let's look at some of this up close. This is really good. This is the God of the Dead. You might have seen uh, my obsidian skull uh, that's at my house. Um, that's this dude right here. Godzilla. It's Godzilla.
bags, I just need more bags. Bought the trip to the store, said I need more splash. Yeah. On her tippy toes, she can sneak right past. Yeah. I'm the man of a dream, she asleep on my ass. That's a hall pass. hall pass. I don't need a hall pass. No. Watch out for the snakes in the tall grass. Not the one to play with, that's a raw fact. Say a hard head, make a soft. Ooh, big time. Number nine. Diamonds in my teeth, I got a lot of shine. Running up the numbers, that's a lot of grind. Try and take it from me, must be out your mind. Oh, I'm big time. Lot of shine. Smokey in the air, that's a lot of pine. Pockets running over with the dollar sign. Try and take it from me. Taste my trip, riding in a spaceship. Work five days straight, go to sleep on day six. She call me the doctor, got a lot of patience You ain't talking dollars, you know that don't make sense Keep your collar, man, I know I'm amazing She just feed me grapes, she look like a raisin Come on. Spend it in the day, I don't do no saving Used to make plays, trapping out the days in I was big time, number nine Diamonds in my teeth, I got a lot of shine Running up the numbers, that's a lot of grind Try and take it from me, must be out your mind